Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to register your battery with ISTA-D, how to check, do the brake bleeding routine with ISTA-D, and also how to check for battery discharge or what's draining your battery, any kind of battery drain on the car, as that's a common problem. But also, the steering angle sensor calibration, which I keep getting asked a lot to do. I don't know how people can't find it in ISTA-D as it's quite easy in the service functions. But here's what I'm going to go and do today. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So hopefully this will help you and it will stop your questions. If you do have any other questions, please leave it in my comments below after this video. So if you've got any other videos you want me to do for you or show you this or show you that of today, that's not an issue. Just let me know in the box below what you want to see me do and I'll do that for you as well. So here we're going to go. We're going to crack on now of ISTA-D. Um, and then what we're going to do is go into the service function and show you how to register a battery now it's quite simple as you the ibs sensor uses that to detect what battery it is so you don't even have to tell it what battery it is and it just resets the date and time as it registers the battery so let's go ahead and do that okay i know people ain't gonna really like this because everyone always moans about me using this on um using it like this instead of doing screen record but obviously i'm not going to do screen record i can do it but i choose not to as like i say i'd rather be with the car while i'm doing this and obviously I'm using a Windows machine, it's just all headache to upload it to YouTube. So here we're gonna go. As you know, when you first start the car, you're gonna be in this section, which is all the tree for all your modules. Now from here, you're just gonna to wanna to move straight to vehicle management. And then what you're gonna to wanna to go to is as you can see, you're in service functions. Then let's just close all this. What you're gonna to wanna to go to now, the first one is for steering angle sensor. So what you're gonna to wanna to go to is powertrain. Uh, sorry, not powertrain, you're gonna to wanna to go to chassis and suspension. Then what you're going to want to go to is steering angle sensor. Steering angle sensor adjustment. Now, I will just adjust it because it ain't going to do anything, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to adjust the steering angle sensor. Now, this is through the ABL. It walks you through it all. It just asks for your steering wheel to be straight and dead center, and then you just, should the steering wheel be adjusted? Yes. Now, if many of you are asking me to clean this, it's not something I need to do because here we don't get that problem with the steering angle sensor. As you can read there, it says exactly set front wheel straight ahead in the position. Here the wheels must be exactly horizontal. So then you just press continue. So it must be very horizontal, which it is already. Then we're just going to click continue. And as you see, drive control system, drive model lead. That's because of that reason. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch off the ignition. Go done a new check. And then what we're going to do is wait. Then we're going to turn the ignition back on after 10 seconds. So what we'll do is turn the ignition back on. The light's now gone off. Then you're just gonna to wanna to press continue. Well, successful, as you see there, steering angle value was zero, zero, which is meant to be. And now all you do is, you just click yes to that, if it is showing correct. That's when you know your steering angle sensor's out of place. And then you just click continue. And then continue again. The next one, brake bleeding routine. Now I don't have to do that, but I'm just gonna show you where it is. As you can see there, it will show you the brake bleeding routine for special cases or brake bleeding routine. Now, as you see, you can activate the brake, brake bleeding via the ABS module to bleed all the brakes. Now, we don't want to start bleeding it, so I'm not going to, but this is how you do it. You press continue and it'll start bleeding the ABS pump. It will start purging it to push out all the air in the brake lines. Now, that was another question I keep getting asked. Can I show how the brake lines are and how to do the brake bleeding routine? You'll just go into that and you will do it in there. So it'll just be in, all in the DSC module. For, same for the steering angle sensor as well. It all comes under each other, as you can see here. So once that's done, then what you want to go to is now another one is to register the battery. Battery will be in body. Then what you want to go down to is voltage supply. This is the voltage supply right here. Now, before we go ahead and register the battery, what I'm going to show you is standby current. Now, what you can do from this is activate the rest state and put the car to sleep. And then what you could do is once you put the car to sleep is then check if anything is um, staying up, keeping the car awake. Now, what we could do is evaluate the closed circuit current monitoring. So what we can do in here now is check what's staying awake in the car when we put the car to sleep. It will show you here what modules are staying awake and what modules are going to sleep. Now, as you can see, it shows you all the cycles which are there. And it will tell you closed circuit, okay. Closed circuit, okay, okay, okay. And then the closed circuit current was above a thousand milliamps. So that will tell you if something's staying awake. And the number of cycles with the standby current is 80 milliamps, one. So that's it. So there's only been 31 since I reset it. So that shows you if the car's staying awake. Obviously, you need to activate the rest state to check. But battery registration. Now, you can also evaluate the battery state of charge. Now, I'll show you how you do that. Power management evaluated power, power battery. So you'd go into here. Now you can see it's reading the measured data from the power plan. Now what you do is press continue. And then you can do charging status and it will show you original battery type, which is the last battery exchange at distance reading 
221 kilometers. State of charge for the last five days. It looks like it's been charging fine. So there you go. Last at 64, one day ago. So it's charging fine. State of charge of the battery is okay. And the IBS sensor. So there you go. So that one's another one how you can check your battery if you feel like your, your battery is not running properly. This is how now you'll register your battery. Now, you'll just click on that register battery exchange. Now, it will load up a load of information. Now, what you want to do is register you want to do display i don't need to register it but you're going to that one to register it now it will show you the history now you can see it will show me the last battery exchange was at that and the third one at that one and the fourth one now you want to go to return to selection now what it will do is register battery exchange now you can i can do this but it's not really going to cause an issue and then you just leave the ignition on while you do this so you leave the ignition on and then you just click enter battery exchange so you just do same capacity 80 amps an hour then you just click OK. Then you do no, because it's not going to be an original BMW part. Then you just see, wait there, Barrick Shen is entered in the engine electronics DME. It will take the time and the date. Well, it does that, and there you go. The following is now entered. The battery exchange was successful in the engine electronics and a standby. So that's how you would register a battery in this today. So as you can see there, you just click continue and continue, and then it stores the date and the time. And then that's that one done as well. So as you can see, guys, that's the only ones you really need to, that I've been keep getting asked to do. So now I've shown you how to do that in ISTA-D. I hope that's going to help you. And you might start, uh, stop asking me now, obviously, how to do it, because it's very it's very simple to do. I know the program's quite hard for anyone to get work their self around. Even Nathan's still struggling to work yourself around how to operate it as well. It is not a straightforward program, but that's how you, that's how you would register your battery. Now, as I say, if you do get any problems with the program, just leave a comment in my box below. As you know, I get back to everyone as, I, as quick as I can, and I will help you with the program. It's what I do. It's what I use the mo mo I use all the time. So I know the program inside and out. If you do get any problems, let me know, and I'm more than happy to help. If you do need a video doing or you can't find this or you can't find that, let me know as well. I'll try and do a video for you to show you how to do each one in turn. But that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. It's BMW Dr. Dean here, and goodbye. <laughs>